Hello, welcome back to the show. We are forging the Pumpkin Folk Witches of Innistrad, a set based on the mana costs from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. This is our third sitting of forging, and we're about halfway through the set. I think I just checked how many cards I've made, and it's about 130 out of 260, so pretty nearly there, uh, because those are both approximate, not because <laughs> that's not exactly half. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. Our first card is this one right here. Corrupter of Truths is a 2-mana two 2-1 two zombie wizard. It is a white and a blue. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Corrupter of Truths unless you sacrifice another non-creature, non-land card. That is terrible. So this is a great time as any to talk about the reroll rules. Uh, this is something that I talk about a lot on the channel. Just, you gotta figure out what counts as rerolling a card for you. And those rules don't have to be strict, they can just be guidelines, but it's gonna help you get more consistent results. And by more consistent, I mean like, I don't know what I mean. Don't worry about what I mean. For today, if something is like clearly broken, doesn't function, it's getting re-rolled. I'm going to try and be pretty lenient on what gets re-rolled other than, not, not lenient. Like, I'm going to try to not re-roll things other than that. I am giving myself the like, this is too weak to use in, like, in limited as kind of a buffer, but not passing the vanilla test and having a downside, pretty bad. Now... It's a recurring sack outlet, but that's a pretty, pretty weak upside, especially since it can't sacrifice creatures, which is usually what want to die. Uh, and there's just so much better ways. I'm rerolling this one. I probably didn't need to go on for that long about my rationale and rerolling, but I want to establish, like, these are not hard rules, but they are in effect. We're going to have things that are too broken, and they're going to stay in probably, Maybe I will sometimes veto something too broken, but very, very rarely. Blindingly Rapid. That's a cool, like, name for an instant. It's like a spell which is bestowing, like, a like a speed to something, as opposed to it being... Yeah, that's weird. Blindingly Rapid is a two mana, one white, one blue, instant that says counter target spell and this controller pays one. Here's an example of a card that is not interesting, which is sometimes I reroll because I think they're not interesting enough, and isn't um, isn't very strong, right? Like, there are cards that are better than this, but having cards that are better than a card does not mean it shouldn't ever be printed. Um, in the same set, there are cards that are better than each other's because one is common and one is rare, so not a big deal. And in a limited environment, yeah, you might you might draft this just because it's, you know, it's a counter spell. You might not have any other options. And, you know, there's not something else that's doing the same thing as this card, even though it's doing it pretty poorly. And is it even doing that, that poorly? Not incredibly poorly, but the fact that it's two color is a downside. Anyway, counter target spell unless the control pays one generic. It will pass, but at the cost of your mind and your eyesight. There you have it. Pharaoh Ragekin is a two mana generic, in, I don't know why I said generic, the two mana green, two two centaur warrior. I don't think we've seen centaurs in this set so far. That's going to be kind of weird, but I'm into it. Why not have centaurs? Why aren't there centaurs in Innistrad? Explain this to me. For tap, return Pharaoh Ragekin to its owner's hand. Activate only if you control a swamp. So, this card. Is this too weak for limited? No. And even if it is too weak for limited, because maybe it is, I don't know. 
I think that it's it's on that level where it's it's not so. I really need something to be crushingly bad. Every set needs a little bit of fodder. That's okay. And I mean, it's a two mana two two, with the upside that you could flick like bounce it to your hand if you need to, right? Like you could block with this, tap it, return it to your hand, then play it again next turn. You don't want to be spending that two mana every turn, but like you can. It's not the worst thing you could do. Yeah. It has a restriction, so it has to be in a black deck, but that's okay. That's still playable. The high cliffs of Svon Svorneld are known for their cunning wolves. The lairs of these creatures are among the wildest, deepest places in the whole of the barrow. That is a cool little short story that has nothing to do with a centaur warrior. That's super weird. I don't know why they did that. Gadok TV. Gadok TV is a two mana two one goblin warrior. They have haste and they're black. And for black, Gadok TV gains flying until end of turn. This card's great. This card's excellent. Just a little, uh, a little jumpy, jumpy 2-1 that has haste. Wings? How fancy. But these things are so ugly. It makes me wonder what I'm looking at is so wrong. Why can't I just go away? Gadok TV. <laughs> Alright, sure. Why can't you just go away? That's a great question. Ritual of Blood is a 2-mana, black and red, 2-1 elemental shapeshifter. You may cast Ritual of Blood as though it had flash. It does not have flash, but it effectively has flash. I'll... That's fine, sure. For black and a red, target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. That is quite good. So for four mana, you can flash this in and give something hexproof. This card's good. Oh, cool. I like this one. Our sins against the clan must atone. Alara Marbrand. Final. Onstive Servant? Elemental Shapeshifter. The idea that this is like... I, I'm i so... in. I know it's just like the AI being kind of dumb, but... I really like when a creature's name is, like, very clearly an instant or a sorcery or something. Where it's just, like, or maybe even an enchantment, but it's just... What's that over there? Oh, that's a Ritual of Blood. That elemental shapeshifter is a Ritual of Blood. Yeah, obviously. That makes sense. Burrington Bomber is a 2-mana 1-1 one, one Goblin Shaman. Ooh, I'm into the Black Goblins. I think that's like... Need more Goblins in Black. When Burrington Bomber enters the battlefield, put target Goblin card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Oh, this card's great! Oh, this card's super cool! I love it! I don't think this is too powerful, even. I really like this card. Yeah! I mean, it's a two mana, you know, res two battlefield, but it's, you know, sorcery speed because it's a creature and it does come with a one, one body, which is nice, but it can only target goblins. I'm, I'm into it. I think that's awesome. The survivors of his family sometimes follow him to burials waiting to feed on the newly dug dirt. Not like eating a corpse or anything. Just like, oh, you're digging up a bot. You're, you're, you're digging a hole. To bury a body? Let me come down. I'll eat some of the dirt. Tormented Champion is a 2-mana, two 2-1 two human cleric. It's really liking that uh, stat line today. Whenever a Tormented Champion or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. That's fun. I mean, there's a, it's clearly very powerful in the right deck, but if you play it in kind of just like a, a sort of fair limited standpoint... Just, yeah. For two mana, you can buff everything for one turn. Pretty strong, actually. And then it's a recurring effect that happens for, you know, as long as it's six on the battlefield. 
Yeah, this is probably too strong, but like not in a way that is not in a way that's gonna break the uh the game really from especially from a you know from an AI standpoint. There are worse things. I like it. Tormented champion. She survived for ten days in the covenant only to be sent to the military. Now she's determined to end the monastery's abuse of innocent souls. Whoa! Okay. Only spent 10 days in the co 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 the convent and was like, no, nope, this place has to go. Uh-uh. What I've seen? Pristine bat is a two-mana bat. <laughs> yeah! It's a 1-1 one -one flyer. At the beginning of each upkeep, it deals one damage to any target. This card is... This card's good. That That's great. Wow. Pings at once every turn. Doesn't have to tap to do it. Ah. There's a specific timing window for when it has to happen, so it's a little bit weaker than if it was, it was like a tap ability, even though it's stronger than a tap ability. I like this card a lot. This card's great. Oh, that's excellent. Love me a 1-1 one, one flyer, especially in black. Inquisitor General. Ooh, so we got some sort of like, yeah, things are going on in Innistrad and we need the Inquisitor. They are a two mana green and white 1-1 one, one elf. I think we've probably seen some elves in, um, I think we've probably seen some elves in Pumpkin Folk Witches of Innistrad so far, even though there aren't elves in real in this draw. They have Vigilance. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player gains one life and draws a card. Oh no! Oh, this card's cool! So like, generally speaking, this is gonna be kinda bad. Cause it's like, ah, I'm gonna make my opponent draw, and they're gonna get to draw first before I do, and I do invest in this. But it's only two mana, and it's a Vigilant 1-1, one -one, which is a pretty nice, I mean it's a 1-1, one -one, but it's still a pretty nice body. Um, and then, yeah, the Emperor demands answers. I'm merely here to deliver them. And if you're playing, like, a mill deck, like a control mill, I know it's, I know it's green-white, so this, if this was a blue card, it'd probably be better, like a blue-white maybe, that would be kind of fun, right? Because it's life gain and draw a card, but, like, you're sitting there being like, I'm going to steadily be ending life, and I'm not planning on killing you anyway. This would be a really cool white-blue card, I think. Change it from Elf to something else. Change the name, too. But the otherwise, the design, really think that would work well in that, in that like, shell. Harness the Storm is a green-white, two-mana instant. Harness the Storm deals two damage to target creature. Okay. That creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Okay! I mean, that's kind of cool. I don't know what the going rate for plus three plus three is. I don't know if this is overpriced. And of course, it has the downside, quote unquote, of the thing you're hitting us to be at least three already. So it's, 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 you can only target something that has three toughness or it will die. Um, and it's only giving a total of plus three plus one to that thing. But plus three plus one could definitely save something's life. That's that's possible that it will save something's life. And you could you're getting plus three. So if someone said, "Hey, I have an instant. It gives something plus three plus one. How much would you pay?" And you'd be like, "As eh, probably one mana, I guess. It's not it's not that great." But it has the upside that it can just it can kill. It can do two damage to a creature to kill it. Like, I love things with two modes like this. This is actually a really cool spell. Harness the Storm, green and white. Interesting. The ritual began in the Great Hunger and ended in the Pale Moonlight. I really probably should pick up the pace, though, right? Like, we're already on day three, and I'm halfway through the set. Spiraling Jin, not a Jin, that's okay, is a two-mana green and red 1-2 elemental spirit, which is... Just a jack-o'-lantern. Spiraling Jin gets plus one plus one as long as an opponent controls more creatures than you. Ooh! 
this is like a really cute effect. I would be way more if this was a two two instead of a one two. I would be very sold on this card. Very cool effect. You know, if your opponent is ahead, then it's a 3-3. Three, three. If they're not, then it's a 2-2, two, two, and that's fine because you're in an okay position. As a 1-2, I don't think it gets there. Especially as a 1-2 that's multicolor, but, you know, that's okay. It still gets to stay in the set. It circles back and forth on the brink of mortal damage. What? Da the danger. Why did, why did I think that's a damger? On the brink of mortal danger, searching for any weakness. I, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like a, what do you call that? It's like a circling vulture, except it's a spirit. It's good. Rise of the Archangel is a two mana, two one human cleric. That's so interesting. That's, it's, ah, just, um, that's so evocative. First Strike and Vigilance, okay, as a, as a two mana 2-1. Two, when Rise of the Archangel enters the battlefield, if you control a cleric, draw a card. So, if it said if you control another cleric, draw a card, this card would be really cool. As it currently stands, it's just, it's just First Strike, Vigilance, draw a card, which is quite good. <laughs> it has been... It has long been known that the Lady of Innistrad guides us in the hours of darkness. She watches over the innocent. I offer my grand gratitude. Shadok of Wrath. This reminds me of something. Please leave comments for the things you'd like to see elaborated on more from the set. So, like... Lady of Innistrad sounds like a really cool, like, legendary creature. After this set is done, I would like to go through it again and make a set of, like, like, face commander cards for the, like, the, like, the, you know, hypothetical, like, pre-con commander decks. You know, they're not part of the main proper set, but they still came out. Yeah, that's... That is what I'd like to do with all these, like, little individual names that are evocative and interesting, and I kind of wish were in this set. But of course, the of course the AI is not going to, like, reuse a piece of flavor text as a, as a card name later. Would be cool, but I know it's not going to, so hold on to those. Any, any interesting little names, I would love to see the comments full of those so that I can, so that I know what ones people want to see when, I, when it comes to that. Mog Monstrosity is a two mana blue one three Drake. <laughs> okay, it has flying like a Drake does. When Mog Monstrosity dies, you gain life equal to its toughness. Huh! I quite like this card, other than the name and art. <laughs> Mog Monstrosity. I'm not inherently against that. Mog, I think, is, you know, associated with goblins. I think there are some goblins called Mogs in certain planes. But otherwise, yeah. It's a 2-1-1-3 Flying Drake. That's a, a very good blocker if you or your opponent's going to try and needle you down with 1-1 one, one birds or whatever. And then if it does die, you're going to get 3 life. Yeah, that's great. The Muganoids. The Muganoids followed the guidance of their wicked mobs to become bloodthirsty beasts of legend. Tell me more about these Muganoids. Slaughterhouse Fungus is a two mana blue black two two zombie giant. Oh, I love this. Oh, and that, that's, that's a very, I want to kind of want to draw fan art of that picture. That picture is very cool. It's got this really cool ominous aesthetic. It doesn't look that big, unless those are really big pumpkins, but still, like, ooh, this is really, really cool. I hope it's a good card. It's a two mana two two. Doesn't seem very giant, but that's okay. They have death touch. They don't need high toughness. They have death touch. It's fine. 
When Slaughterhouse Fungus dies, you may search your library for a card named Slaughterhouse Fungus. It goes directly onto the battlefield. Ooh! Okay, so that's really fun, right? It's this big giant, it's this big zombie giant, but you know what it actually is? It's something that can trade with Death Touch four times, right? Like, it's basically saying, hey, this card, when it dies, it comes back to life four times. It has Death Touch every time, but you can only one run one in your deck, right? Like, that's kind of what it's saying. Obviously, there's additional benefits, like deck thinning, blah, 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 blah. If you draw it, you aren't able to... You can't tutor it out if you already have it in your hand. But, like, that design space is super interesting. Oh, that's such a cool design space. I do kind of wish it was, like, green, uh, like, green-black. But otherwise, like, I really like this. And, like, maybe you could even do some stuff where you, like, shuffle your graveyard into your library and then you keep repeating it. That's a blue effect, right? Ah, that's cool. I like that. Some dead things in this room are a little bit bigger than you. Urborg, a Tomb Raider. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Captain of the Shore is a two-mana, two-one, Merfolk Rogue. They have First Strike. Okay. They have Prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Okay. When Captain of the Shore enters the battlefield, draw a card. Okay, this card's actually kind of similar to that, that other one we saw before, where I was like, it's got First Strike Vigilance and it draws a card? That thing I think actually was a 2-2, but this isn't much different. It's First Strike Prowess and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Checks out. See if we can get a cycle. That would be rad. My legs are as long as I need them to be, and I've always got a trick up my sleeve. Oh, uh, this is one of those merfolks that have legs. I don't think Merfolk should have legs. Uh, unpopular opinion. Witch's Market is a 2-mana 1-3 Elf Witch. Ooh, I'm kind of interested in this Elf Witch thing. Like, again, I mentioned earlier, we don't really have Elves in Innistrad. Maybe the Witches of Innistrad are not the, like you know, Coven and such. I don't remember what they're called. That we saw a lot of the green-white faction, which are mostly, like, druids. Instead, they are elves. And the elves are probably less, like, you know, their own society, like we see them in other fantasy. They're probably more, like, humans that are not quite like other humans. They're probably just kind of, like, slight mutations or something. They wouldn't actually do that in proper magic, like... There are those humans that are like, oh yeah, we grow metal out of our skull. We're still humans, so like, obviously, <laughs> there's, there's, you know. Anyway, I haven't even read this card yet. Witch's Market is a two mana green, one, three, elf witch. At the beginning of each end step, if you gained four or more life this turn, you may draw a card. That's a pretty big ask, but I mean, it's a very cool design. It feels like an enchantment. But honestly, I really like this design a lot, right? Witch's Market sounds like it is a enchantment. But having a body feels appropriate. This is, a, this is the market full of witches, right? This is one of those creature cards that represents multiple people. These aren't fighters. These are people who are just doing their, their, their marketing. Not marketing. You know what I mean. They're going to market. They're not actually here to fight. But they, they you know... As a group, they are a 1-3, even though they'd actually individually be, like, zero ones. But there's more than, you know... Anyway, I kind of like the idea of saying, this creature represents a group. I always love cards that say this creature represents a group, but this is a group which is defined by being at a market and having a market stall, and so it can actually get you, like, you know, it can get you cards and stuff. I love it. I love it. It is both an enchantment that has a body, which is cool, but also is easier to remove because it has a body and it doesn't have not, not an enchantment. Uh, it can't isn't susceptible to enchantment removal. It doesn't count as an enchantment. I'm not saying that, but uh, I like this card. I'm into this. The main ingredient for most elves' favorite drink is tofu. I didn't expect that. 
Moonrise Blade is a two mana colorless artifact equipment. Equipped creature has plus two, plus two, and has first strike. It equips for three. I don't know whether or not this is a like over costed equipment, but honestly, a lot of sets have like any sets that aren't equipment based, right? There are like equipment based sets that have really good equipment in them. And then most other sets have, like, this is the Shiv from New Capenna, or the Bloodletting Knife from the, the Vampire one, the Crimson Vow. And they're just, like, they're fine. They're fine. They're not, they're not going to go in any, like, really good equipment decks. But they're good in the limited environment of the set, right? Like, that's what this reminds me of. I wonder if it's actually really strong. I have no clue. It feels like a good effect, though. Plus two, plus two, and first strike is nice. But it's five mana overhead. You could then, you know, continuously equip it for three, which is which is very nice. But I don't know how well that five mana overhead is. Uh, I don't know how well that would go with the player base. It looks like the Harvest Moon is making another appearance this year. Heck yeah, it's my blade. That's no moon. <laughs> Dang it, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Beloved Monarch. Oh, whoa. The implications of this card are so cool. Beloved Monarch is a two mana, colorless, two two artifact creature human wizard. It's like. It's like an effigy of a monarch that people like, love, but isn't actually real. And also, it's not legendary, so, like, oh, wow. Like, there's multiple of them? Ah, uh, I, oh, just the flavor is really, I hope we get something good. I haven't read the text yet. Tap. Target player mills two cards. Activate only if you have fewer than five cards in hand. As long as you control a creature with flying, you gain four life, and you lose two life. Crap. So, if we pretend that that second line of text is part of the activated ability, I think the way that it's formatted, what it actually means is one ability, target player most two cards, second ability, as long as you control a creature with flying, you gain four life and lose two life. Which which just means you gain infinite life. That's all that actually means. So that is, I'm I really want to keep this card in concept because I really like the I like the flavor of this name and the fact that it's an artifact and it's like the implications are so cool. But it's not like the effect actually has anything to like like there, the the effect isn't tied into the flavor in a way that's super satisfying. And the effect, even if we if, if if we pretend that that's how it works, the target player mills two cards, you gain if if you is if you control a creature with flying, you also gain four life and lose two life. Even if we pretend that that is like not a broken functioning, because I'm pretty sure that's not how it's formatted. Even if we pretend that's not broken and that that's what that means, it's still not that interesting. And it has that whole like gain four, lose four, and even though. You kind of have to take some liberties with the AI and not be too harsh with it. I do want the cards to sort of look like they function properly, even if, like, there's no point of gain four, lose two. It's That's just gain two. Yes, there are some situations where it's like whenever you gain, something happens. Whenever you lose, something happens. So there is a technical difference that might sometimes be relevant, but not enough. <clears throat> but at the end of the day. The card doesn't function. I'm going to re-roll it. But first. He could read your thoughts like pages of a book. Jalarel. Don't know who that is. Are they a real legendary creature? Maybe. Tapestry of the Gods is a two-mana colorless artifact. It taps to add colorless. Okay. And for one in tap, Tapestry of Gold, Tapestry of Gods deals one damage to you. (laughs) 
That's so interesting. So that is effectively a two mana ability because you're not tapping it for colors. You're instead tap you're spending one mana and tapping it to do day one damage to you. Is that ever useful? Probably not. I, there are going to be fringe situations where that's relevant, and it's going to be very cool to have the option of doing that, and you're going to be able to feel very clever. And honestly, that is enough, right? If this card only said one tap, it deals one damage to you, I'd be like, that's that's the, the situations where that comes up is so rare, who even cares? Let's not bother. If it's just said tap, add colorless, I'd probably keep it, but I'd be disappointed. I'd be like, this is this is just a, a functional reprint. I mean, it must be. There must be a mana rock that does the exact thing and is just very boring. This is not much stronger than a two mana tapped ad colorless, which is a perfectly fine printable card. And it has this extra ability that will never be good, but will sometimes, sometimes make you feel very clever and I think that that's worth something. It's probably never going to be worth it. But hey, I don't know. It serves the memory, not the reality. The Tapestry of the Gods serves the memory of the gods, but not the reality of the gods. That's actually very cool, right? Like, oh, no, no, no. This was not written to actually represent what, what they're actually like. We just want to, you know, this is how we remember them. Street Wraith is a two-mana vampire rogue. They're a black 1-1 one, one creature with one mana. Sorry. Black, tap, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Honestly, not super interesting. But, you know, useful sometimes. You know? Useful sometimes. This could probably block pretty okay. Should it maybe be a 2-2? Two, two? Probably. That's okay. We gotta fill out our commons, you know? Primitive Pump King. Another Pump King! Two mana, two one, black, elemental. It has trample, okay? Other primitive pumpkins, not pump kings, enter the battlefield tapped, okay? At the beginning of your upkeep, if Primitive Pump King is in your graveyard, you may put it onto the battlefield. Whew! Um... I like this card other than the fact that it says Other Primitive Pumpkins. Implying that that's a real card and we know it won't be. Other than that, I really like it. It's just a 2-mana two 2-1 two with Trample that resurrects itself forever. Which is already pretty good. No plant will rival it for mass or potency. It's not a plant. It's an elemental. A plant can't rival an elemental. I don't know if that's true. I'm going to keep it. I'm a little bit, you know, miffed by it. You, The problem with this card isn't that primitive pumpkins won't show up. It's that... Every table that plays with this card will go, do you think, do, should we treat that as pump kings or should we not? And then the players have to make a decision. There is no official ruling like, oh yeah, that's a misprint or nope, that card just hasn't been printed yet. It's like the steam flogger boss, right? Like because it's so close, not because it doesn't make sense, but because it's so close, it's going to make those you know, discussions. I shouldn't say arguments, but discussions. And that really makes me hesitant on it. So let me know what you think in the comments. Lantern Syndicate. And that's just a really cool name. I don't know what that means, but it's great. Is a two mana red instant. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. A creature with trample can deal excess damage, combat damage, to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's a card that does this exact same thing. I don't know how much it costs. I'm fine with this. They will wake up. 
They won't take up their old places at the watering hole. I am so curious what the story on that card is because Lantern Syndicate makes no sense to me. But again, I really should flip through some of the more, you know, the, I should flip through the commons faster. That's a fine card. Let's keep going. Frantic Seismos is a instant for X, black, green. Gain control of target non-land permanent. You may put it onto the battlefield as a copy of a creature you control, except that it has haste. That is such a cool ability and does not actually function. It should be something like gain control of target non-land permanent or like exile target non-land permanent, put it under the battlefield under your control as it enters the battlefield, you know, like it, 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 and you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy or something like that, right? Um, or gain control, uh, you know. The idea of it entering the battlefield as a copy is so interesting. But again, it's not entering the battlefield. It is changing control, so it doesn't function. Even if this card did function, I'm going to re-roll this until the X is used. This is just a personal preference. If you're going to do something weird with your mana, like have an X in it, I'm going to make you use it. Sometimes there'll be a card that's like kicker and then it doesn't have a use of the kicker. I'm I'm going to try to reroll those ones too just cuz I think it makes the game more interesting, but here we know we're going to get an X every time. Whereas the kicker one, if I reroll that it probably just doesn't give you a kicker card, so I maybe I was better off just keeping the kicker. So that's more debatable this one. We're going to see what we can do. Curse of the Mortals X black, green. Sorcery. Each player sacrifices X creatures and discards a card. <laughs> Where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. So, we actually see this effect a lot. Not this exact thing, but I don't know how often Magic does this proper, and I think it's mostly because the AI got con it is confused and doesn't really understand how X mana works, but it often will be like, this is what X has to be. Which means Curse of the Mortals says, doesn't say, you know, X, black, green, you get to decide what X is. It says, you know, you have five, five cards in your graveyard. This is seven mana. Each player sacrifices five creatures and discards a card. Which, I don't know if that's playable. It might be. I think I want to see another take on this card, just because X cards are interesting and I want to keep trying, because I want to see a really cool card. This card is cool. Do not get me wrong. It's just so specific, I don't think it would see any play, and I'd like to see the X cards get played, because they're cool! X cards are cool! If the result isn't the Head of the Dead, the damage dealt by Curse of the Mortals can't be prevented. Yeah, also, flavor text that thinks it's rules text is super weird, and I don't really like it aspect of awesome x black green instant aspect of autumn deals x damage to any target if a creature dealt damage this way would die this turn exile it instead it's black green fireball <laughs> sort of i know fireball is different than that but still like <laughs> is that good uh, the time of the awesome revel is short, and the memories are muted by age and hardship. I don't need to re-roll this one, but I'm going to. I just, I feel it in my bones that this card needs to get re-rolled. Not because it's too broken, not because it's too weak, I just, I want something different. I know that's completely arbitrary, but I just... This one gets rerolled too. I haven't read it yet, but this one gets rerolled too. Sorcery for X black green is an instant. Reveal X target artifact cards from your hand, then exile them. X can't be zero. Uh, what is what? <laughs> Some people wear armor, but we are free to choose how we are presented to the world. You're right unknown speaker on that card 
All is fair in love and war. X, black, green. Sorcery. Assemble the mages! Exclamation mark. Each player sacrifices a creature. You each return X plus that creature's mana value to your hand. Uh, so I want to know what All is Fair in Love and War is, is, and such, I was like, that's a cool name for a card. Then it has, I guess it's a keyword. It says Assemble the Mages and doesn't say what that keyword means. It's not an ability word, because if it was an ability word, it would have like a hyphen or something, right? Like Landfall doesn't just say Landfall, right? It's got like, a, am I wrong about that? But even if we pretend it's an ability word... It doesn't tell us what is being returned. Assemble the mages. Each player sacrifices a creature. You each, you each, return X, which is what you repaid, plus that creature's mana value to the battlefield. I, I'm super into this. This is such a cool design. The idea of like, okay, we both sacrifice something, and then depending on the, the, the you know, mana value of the thing we sacrificed... Uh, plus whatever I paid, we get to cheat something out. Probably a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield is the implication, but it doesn't say that. That's a cool card. That's a really interesting design. It's also sorcery, which is a lot fairer. Possibly makes it pretty weak, but I like it. I like this design a lot. The beauty of their witch fire, however, is only skin deep. Farika, sovereign of all. But it doesn't function. Altar of Flame. X- Black, green, sorcery. Alter of Flame deals X damage to each creature without flying. Okay, this is actually quite interesting. This card might exist, I don't know. The whole fire thing feels weird, not in red, but I'm not really here to, like, you know, keep... I'm not really here to honor the color pie. The fact that it, it only hits ground creatures makes it kind of an interesting style for Wrath. The fact that, you know, if you bought a bunch of 2-2s two on the ground, you can spend 4 mana. If things are a bunch of 1-1s, one you can spend 3 mana. Yeah, there's some interesting stuff going on there. It's probably not good enough, I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's not really for me to decide. It feels out of pie, which is also fine. I'm spending way too much time on this card. I'm going to re-roll it. I'm not going to justify it. I'm just going to re-roll it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Stench of Decay. X, black, green. Instant. Destroy target non-creature permanent. If it's a zombie, it can't be regenerated. <sighs> I was really hoping this one was going to work. Like, it just didn't use the X in any way. This is a two-mana kill spell. It can only target non-creatures. Weird. Death is merely a new beginning. I like this card a lot. This card's cool. Viscerid Sign. I guess... I hadn't really realized this, but... Uh, the, AI, the AI would much prefer to make non-creatures for X cards. Which makes sense when you think about it. There's probably more precedent for that. Viscerid Sign. X, black, green. Sorcery. Reminder text. X, black, can be paid with either black or X. I didn't read the rest of that card. Maybe I should have. Seed Swarm. X, black, green. Instant, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. It does not use the X. So, I'm going to re-roll it. I'm sorry, I know I should have just taken black, green, fireball. I know. Is this still text? It's not. Okay, good. We'll re-roll that. You got to check that sometimes, or it sometimes breaks things, and you'll end up losing a card you actually liked. Night Veil Mystic. X, black, green is a 3-3 three, three spider. Uh, the AI heard me and was like, oh, you wanted a not you wanted a creature? Fine. Here is a weird spider, which is a jack-o'-lantern, but it's like a card of the jack. Anyway, it is a 3-3 three, three with flying. At the beginning of each end step, create X, 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens where X is that many 
plus one. I didn't, I didn't. Woodlouse Scuddler, X black green, three, three insect. I like that we're seeing insects again, right? We had insect druids last time. I was hoping those weren't gone forever. It's a three, three with trample and prowl. Whenever Woodlouse Scuddler or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, target creature can't block this creature. Is that a real keyword? I don't know that keyword. I thought prowl meant you couldn't be blocked by creatures with more power than you or something. Huh. Woodlice eat lumber, but only the greenest stuff. Cool. Once again, doesn't use X. So. Whip Spur is a X gr black green worm. There are 2 2 with X black green. Whip Spur gets plus X plus X until end of turn. Also, it has trample. I am not a judge. So I am not sure, but I'm curious. Does Whip Spur mean, because my understanding of X cards is that if the body text of the card does not state what X is, you, when you cast it, declare what X is, and then you pay that mana cost. Which, I believe, that doesn't change. It can change if it's like, um you know, X is the number of creatures on the battlefield, and it's like, well, there's five creatures on the battlefield, I have to pay X is five, and then some creatures die, you know, that it moves. But if you are just declaring what X is, I think what this ability means is, for two mana, you can have a 2-2 two -two with black-green, Whisper gets plus zero, plus zero until end of turn. If you spend three mana, you get a 2-2, two -two, which says, for three mana, Whisper gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Which, like, that's super weird. I can't tell if I like that or not. It's interesting. Even as a two mana 2-2 two -two with Trample, that's a fine card. But the idea that you have to, like, remember what X is, which isn't, like, that's not unheard of, Right? They would probably say something like, note, as it enters the battlefield, note X or something like that. I don't know. When whipping the sky into flight, the sky makes sure you're close enough to get your licks in. Interesting. I shouldn't keep rolling this. I really shouldn't be too picky. I just, mmm. Necromonger. X, black, green. A 3-3 three, three worm with an O, not a U. When Necromonger enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Okay. For tap, add X mana in any combination of colors. Then, if that mana isn't spent on X spells, draw X cards. What? <laughs> so, wait a minute. Again, this is a thing where you have to basically note what X is. But I'm kind of into this. Maybe this is just me being bad, but that's that's cool. So it's a two mana three three that ETB gives you a makes all your opponents lose a life and you gain a life. Already very strong. If you spend three mana on it, it's a three three that says tap add one mana of any color. Then. If that mana isn't spent on one spell, draw one card. I, I assume what this means is, like, you have to spend the mana before you get that effect. Yeah, I guess, it's, I guess there's too many rulings for this card. I want to keep this, but I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm deciding my own interpretation instead of it being clear on the card, which it's not that that's not true for real magic cards sometimes, where I, you know, I, sometimes I'll need a judge, but yeah, I want to keep this, but I don't think I can. I don't think that's fair. Witch's Cauldron is an X black green sorcery. Put target card from a graveyard on top of its owner's library. All things grow when their seeds are planted. 
That's not true. And it doesn't use the X, so... I'm vetoing it because it doesn't use X. I should have... I know, I should have just taken Black Green Fireball. I get it. Perilous Research. X Black Green Sorcery. Create X 1-1 one, one Black Vampire Creature Tokens with Flying where X is the number of swamps you control. Okay. So here we are. If you only control one swamp, this is a three mana, one one flyer. At sorcery speed. Very bad. If you have two swamps, it is a four mana, create two one one flyers at sorcery speed, which isn't horrible. That is, that's actually pretty fine. But you are forced to pay based on how many swamps you have, which is kind of a theme for the set. I feel like there's other X cards that we've seen already that have that same idea. Not necessarily swamps, but that thing. So I like using that again. I think that's nice. And honestly, you're probably going to get a pretty efficient amount, right? If you're spending five mana on this, that's three flyers. They're one, one flyers. One, one flyers are pretty good. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's good. We're moving on. Vampires are hunters of any living thing. Also, they're vampires. I forgot about that. That's that's relevant sometimes. Sometimes vampires are relevant as a creature type. Scar-faced Blackhawk is a two-mana, two-two orc pirate with island walk. Whenever Scar-faced Blackhawk enter Blackhawk attacks, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each island you control. I hate Landwalk. I actually love this card. This card is so cool. They're a flipping pirate. They're gonna go check, they're gonna, they're the pirate. If you're playing black blue, then on attack, they get a buff. Only when they're attacking, they can't block. Only when they're attacking. They're also... If you removed Island Walk, I'd be very into this card. With Island Walk, it makes me uncomfortable because I just don't like Island Walk. I don't like Land Walk at all. I think it only is good if you can sort of like instant speed control it. Like protection. I don't like color protection, but I do like, you know, tap target creature gets protection until end of turn. I like those effects. The ones where you're sort of like in control of it. And when it's like choose a color, you know? Like, if this is an ETB, mark a land type, and just become unblockable to, like, gain lock for that, it would be really strong. But, you know, no stronger than it just saying it is unblockable. Actually, that's an interesting question. As much as I don't like land walk, I have to ask myself, if this card said, Scar-Faced Blackhawk cannot be blocked. Whenever it attacks, get plus one, plus one per island you control. Would I think this card is too overpowered? And while it probably is, I don't think it's too overpowered for AI magic. And I also just think that sounds like a really cool card. So all this is is slightly less powerful than that. And it's on theme. I love this card. This card's great. Get away, get away, get away. The Druid's motto. <laughs> Orc Pirates! This has been a very different day of forging. I always wonder, like, how much is that a thing? Is it, like... Like, do you think that I'm getting, like, a different seed because I'm waiting days between these? Probably. Overgrown Bow Eater. Two mana, one one, Elf Druid. Okay. It's green. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2 2 green Trifo creature token. Ah, the always overlooked and completely missed infinite combo with itself. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2 2 green Trifo creature token. So it just goes infinite with itself. If it said non token, this card would be fine. So if you wanted to play with this card and you wanted to say, we are just treating it as if it said non-token, that's awesome. That's a great card. It's a little 1-1 one, one that makes a bunch of 2-2s. Two, 
cool card. I actually really like it. Overgrown Bow Eater is a great name. And the flavor text is, Here in the crags and groves of Zendrick, we call it pruning. It makes the best tools. Tatagon of the Lightwood. Super cool. Really like that. I'm going to reroll it. It's it, I'm not editing these cards. I'm curating them, but I'm not editing them. So, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye. That is, so actually, you know, I was couldn't think of an example of, like, like, I couldn't explain what too overpowered is. That is an example of too overpowered. Not even because it is, doesn't function, and not because it's too strong. It's just because, like, it, it's too powerful for the game. The game will just end in a draw unless you have instant speed way of stopping it, right? Like, don't do that. Stark Eater Emissary is a 2-mana green 1-1 one, one elf warrior. When Stark Eater Emissary enters the battlefield, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That's a really clean card. I'm not excited about it, but that, you know, again, I gotta embrace more of the cards I'm not excited about. When death is only the beginning. Whip Fin Whips. So two mana, green, zero, zero, bat. Whip Fin Whips enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. For green, remove a plus one plus one counter from Whip Fin Whips. It deals damage equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on it to any target. I don't know why this is a bat. It is a two mana three three, which is honestly perfectly fine. That's like not broken. It doesn't have flying, which is a shame because it's a bat. If this wasn't a bat, if this was like a goblin or something with a pea shooter, ah, I would love that. Instead, you can spend a green and remove a single counter from it to do two damage, then another counter to do one damage, and then that's it. So it can ping for two, then ping for one, and then be left as a one-one. I like this card. Good card. The their best known habit is whipping passing prey into submission. That seems not great. I don't know how I feel about that, but oh well. Ge got got gear gear gyre gyre gear reach click or click. Some people say click. Click is such a weird sounding word. Click. Like, I don't need to get into that. Two mana, green, two one, human wizard. It has flash, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life. That's such a clean card. Is it overpowered? Maybe. Is it going to break a game? No. This card's cool. At the spires of death, one fuses into another. Elspeth, warrior princess of Innistrad. Elspeth, what are you doing? <laughs> is this like when everyone went to Ixalan and turned into pirates and you're like, what? You're just, what? Why are you pirates over here? I'm into it, but what are you doing? Hmm. Pumpkinborns is a two mana, one, one human warrior. I'm into this. There's some kind of thing where it's like, I don't know, maybe it's like special training. Maybe it's just like, you know, like a, a, a village of people who wear pumpkins they're the Pumpkinborns. I don't know. As Pumpkinborns enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. Whenever Pumpkinborns attacks, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So, I like this. I like this card. It grows. It's fun. It has to attack. So it actually, you know, is a little bit... You know, it's not going to grow with without you attacking. So you, you, there's some risk involved. That's the word I'm looking at. It doesn't use that first line. As Pumpkinborns enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. Which is fine, I guess. Especially if you really do want some, like, quirky, haha, look at the silly AI. This is one of those, like, lines that you can be like, wow, that's silly that it did that, but also it didn't break the game. So, have your fun. I think this card's cute. It's a shame it doesn't use the opponent you chose, but at least it didn't break the card by being, like, you gain control of target opponent or something. For the rest of the game. They clamor, knowing it is only the beginning of a long, cold night. I like this card. It's cool. It's a cool card. Gore Clan Avenger. For green and white is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two human warlock. 
Whenever Glore Clan Avenger attacks, defending player mills a card. Sure. It's not interesting, but it is a 2 2 for 2 that has an upside, in air quotes. And that's really all you can ask for. As long as my soldiers are standing in front of me, I can stop a riot. General Morden. I guess the thing is, it's not that this card is just completely, like, abysmal, unplayable. It's that it's multicolor. Like, I want that to be more interesting. Oh, well. Skyhunter Proctor for white and black is a two mana, two, one vampire. It has flying, and whenever Skyhunter Proctor attacks, if you attacked with creatures with flying this combat, draw a card. Um, I don't think that functions, does it? Huh. Weird. Like, it checks to see if you attacked with them this combat when it attacks, which means it doesn't happen until, like, you couldn't have until it's already checked. I'm not sure if that's true or not, because, like, obviously it sees itself enter the battlefield if it was an ETB trigger, so maybe it's fine. But if that's true, then it just goes off every turn regardless, because this creature has flying, and therefore that's not interesting. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reroll. Slayer of Undeads is a 2-mana, white, black, 2-2, two, two, zombie wizard. How's that working out for you, Slayer of Undeads? Tap, prevent the next 1 damage that would be dealt to any target this turn. Okay. For white and a black, exile Slayer of Undeads. Exile target creature card from a graveyard. A very specific effect, but... On theme, kind of, right? Like, that thing's gonna stay dead, because I'm gonna exile it, and that's worth it to me. Though I never know how to evaluate that kind of effect, but that's okay. That's okay, <laughs> you know? Um, it's a useful effect in a fringe situation. If that was the only thing going for it, I'd probably reroll, but in this case, no, the prevent is fine. It's otherwise a 2 and a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, it's got a little fringe upside. I like that. Bewitched Terrain is a 2-mana white... Yeah, it's a 2-mana white instant. Destroy target non-black creature. It can't be regenerated. It's, it's, it's Doomblade. Um, not interesting. I don't mind this. I'm not going to bother re-rolling. I need to be a bit faster and not re-roll so much. It pricked up its ears at the far-off whir of leathery wings. Slingshot Goblin is a green-blue goblin scout. Yeah! <laughs> it's a 2-1 with flying. That's it, actually. It's just a 2-1 with flying that's a goblin. It is called Goblin Scout. This card is probably not very good. It's fine. I definitely would run it if I was playing green and blue. But the fact that it's two colors is a little bit limiting. It would be nice if it was only green. Blue is kind of a weird color for goblins anyways. But, I mean, unless they're like an is it goblin, I guess. Those ones are, yeah. Anyway, I like it. Simple cards are good sometimes. The slingshot goblin goes first and misses the skirmish. Then follows its lead and keeps its head. Okay, we have actually made it to where I previously was. We've met up with when I first did it and I started at the bottom and went up. So all these cards are already done. That's beautiful. And that also means that we are now moving on to the plus three cards, mana value. Um, there might still be a few more mana value three cards that we need to get through, but otherwise, we are actually going to yeah, we're going to get there. Probably we're going to get there today. I don't know how many more Mana Value 3 cards there are. I'm going too far. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Ah, uh, the Colossal Giant. A 3-mana 5-4 Giant. 
pure vanilla. Shame it's not a plant or something. Really like that card, though. Sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes all you need is just a big, dumb card. Ah. Scholar of Mystic Astronomy is a 3-mana, 2-2, two, two, black human wizard. Whenever Scholar of Mystic Astronomy or another wizard you control dies, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Cool. It's wizards only, which is an interesting drawback. Otherwise, this card is not very good. It's fine, but it's not great. The fact that it's a re repeatable effect is cool. I don't think it necessarily needs to be wizards only to be balanced, but that's okay. I think it's fun. Magic isn't what I do. It's who I am. I feel you. I feel you, wizard. That's an artist wizard right there. Elvish Colossus is a 3-mana, 2-3 Elemental Shaman. Okay. Uh, tap, add green for each Elvish Cleric you control. I think I might reroll this one. Ah, that's so cool. If it, was, if it said each Elvish Colossus you control, that would be cool. Because it's like, this is an expensive mana dork that can tap for green. But if you have two of them, they both tap for two green. And if you have three of them, like, that would be a really fun effect. Have they done that before in Magic? That feels like something that they should have done. That's really fun. That's cool. A single spark is all that's needed to start a forest fire. But, unfortunately, in this case, it does not say that. It says Elvish Cleric, which doesn't even mean if you for each Elf Cleric, cleric you control. If it said each Elf Cleric, that would be weird, but that's possible. That's something that could come up. I'm going to reroll this one. Hollowwood Exterminator for three mana is a 1-2 spider with flying. But... For green, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. That is so strong. Ah, I mean, the fact that it's not generic and it's green is a lot, it is relatively limiting, which is good. And it's three mana overhead, which is not nothing. But a flyer that you can bump like that, mm, very nice. Okay. Even if it eats the same bugs over and over, the food is always better. There you have it. Keep forgetting to generate the card before I scroll. Gory Grubbo, or Steel Vine Pathway, or Steel Vine Something's Cut Off. It's a 4 3 vanilla card. <laughs> uh, what's it say? Some use my undergrowth as a ramp. I think that's fair. I use them as a roof. Jory Grubbo. Soot Touched Witch is a 3 mana 2 1 elf druid. So far in the Pumpkin Witches of Innistrad, we have seen a witch used as a creature type, which I still think would be cool. I think that would be a fun thing to do that. Wizards do that. So it is a little bit surprising to see Witch in the name, but it's a Druid. But if this was normal magic, that would make total sense because Witch isn't a creature type. And Druid is perfectly reasonable for this Witch. <clears throat> when Soot-Touched Witch enters the battlefield, return target green creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Cool. It can resurrect something for three mana. It's sorcery speed. It does have a 2-1 body, but it can only target green creatures, which is usually what you're going to want to in a green deck anyway, but still, it's a limitation. I like this card. It might be stronger than it should be, but that's okay. The Cauldron never slept, and neither did the Witch Queen. Blood Moon Vampire is a 3-mana, three 3-2 three black flying vampire. For generic and black, return Blood Moon Vampire from your graveyard to the battlefield. Holy crap, this card is oppressive. You have to, you ha, you, you gotta do it. You got, what, okay. Wow, a 3-2 flyer that you can cheat out every time it dies for two mana? 
Yeah, I want this card. This card's good. The Cowl's plans do not go unchallenged. Oh, we've got a faction. The Cowl. Who are the Cowl? I like it. That's a good name for a vampire. Like, grope. I can't think of a good word. Anafenza. Fanfare Moonspinner is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two zombie witch. I like everything about this card so far, except that it's not legendary. That's a little disappointing. It is a flyer. It For 2 and a white, draw a card, then discard a card. That is... You know what? I'm going to re-roll this one. I like... It's a 3-mana 2-2 two -two flyer, though. That's still good. And it's a zombie witch? That's cool. What's the flavor text saying? What matters most is the way in which we show our faith. Bramble Crusher Squee. Drudge Witch. Bramble Crusher Squee! <laughs> I want to I wanna see Bramble Crusher Squee. Yeah, I mean, this card perfectly functions. It's not exciting, but hey, it's a 3-mana 2-2 two -two flyer. That's fine. And if you want to, you can draw a card and discard a card. I never evaluate looting as powerful as it is, so it's probably great. Oh, that's really good. That's so funny. Vincan in the chat says, It says a zombie witch, but it could be the corpse of a goblin. Very interesting point. Kavu Reaver is not a Kavu. It is a 3-mana black 3-1 spider. When Kavu Reaver dies, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield under your control. Cool. Yeah. It does say target creature. I wonder if... Can this resurrect itself? Can this just be a 3-mana three 3-1 three that resurrects every time it dies? Like, does that go in an infinite loop? Or does it have to be other creature? Like, it doesn't say other creature card, but, like, we've seen how powerful being able to sacrifice the same thing infinite number of times is. We know that's very, very strong. In a limited environment, I don't think it's going to be an issue, so it's probably fine for our purposes, but I don't actually know whether or not it can return itself. Because, man. Eh. It's when it dies. I don't think it's in the graveyard yet, right? I think that's correct. I think there's a window between it dying and hitting the graveyard. I could be mistaken. He will take the arm and leg off your cadaver before finishing the job. I mean, it's pretty good. It's 3 mana 3 one. It's a spider. He doesn't have reach, so watch out. Don't think you have reach when you don't. Uh, <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, it's just going to keep coming back. Or it's going to cheat out something else, which is cool. Savage Thaumaturge is a 3-mana 2-1 Goblin Rogue Thread. It has haste. When Savage Thaumaturge enters the battlefield, you get energy, energy. Pay, energy, energy. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. I don't know if that's a very strong effect, but this is not the first energy card in the set. So unless, well, unless I'm... It's entirely possible that I'm misremembering and I'm thinking of a different set. I do make a lot of cards, but I'm pretty sure this is not the first energy card in the set. So, even though there's not a strong energy theme, more than one, good enough for me. So that's cool. I'm into that. It is a little expensive. It's a 2-1 with haste for three. But, you know, energy. Eh? Oh, I didn't, did I read this yet? There's a minefield of... If you attack a creature you control, destroy a creature you control in every rogue's repertoire. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Okay, not only is that like a surprising quality of render from the AI, uh, this card is just called Witches of Innistrad. Which, now that I think about it, did we already do that? I feel like we might have already seen a Witches of Innistrad card. I'll have to check to make sure we're not having a duplicate name. Not 100% certain. Either way, 3 mana, 3-2, three Human Warlock. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may gain 1 life. 
not the most interesting thing, but we did see a card earlier that was like if you gain three life this turn, draw a card on your up your end step. I'm now realizing I don't know if that said on your end step or on your upkeep. If it was on your upkeep, that's never gonna happen. Oh well. This card is not finishing rendering, which makes me wonder if I'm gonna have to re-roll it to get the number. I'd rather not re-roll it, but it does look like it might not finish rendering. You can see the, the glow. That's how you can tell if it's still rendering or not. If it fails to render, I just, I won't be able to save it. It will disappear when we actually try to export any of these cards at the end of the day, so. Oh well. I should keep an eye on it though. Yeah. Whispering Harbinger is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two Flying Spirit. It's white. Whenever Whispering Harbinger deals combat damage to a player, you may search your library for a card named Mind Stalker. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. I, I mean, that's not going to happen, but cool. This is one of those cards that, like, it's a real shame that card's never going to exist. But if it did exist, if we pretend that card exists, this is a cool design for a card. Three mana, two, two flyer. That, when it connects, you can tutor a card into your hand that has that specific name. You can do it repeatably if you have multiple copies of it in your deck. Yeah, I like this card. I think this card's cool. As ghosts of victims wander, their cries for help fill the air. Gravitic Bailoth is a 3 mana 0 0 spirit. Fly. Gravitic Bailoth enters the battlefield with 3 1 1 counters on it. We've seen this effect before. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 3 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters on Gravitic Bailoth, sacrifice it, unless you sacrifice a creature. Ah, uh, no. I refuse. Falkotha Nightgale, or Nightingale. It's a bird! Yay, we love birds here. Three mana, one one bird with flying. Pretty expensive. When Falkotha Nightgale enters the battlefield, you gain one life. I think I might veto this on the grounds of not good or interesting enough. I know I'm trying to not do that too much, but eh, this is... Eh. Don't think about how it chirps. Think about how it stings. What? No, sings. It says sings. Molly Brightblade. Oh, I know more about Molly Brightblade. While that's loading, I actually would like to slip up and see if this card finished. It did not. This card's never going to finish. I can tell. I'm not going to wait around forever. Let's see what we can see instead of this card. Goodbye, Witches of Innistrad. I actually, I'm not sure if we already have a card of your name. We might. I, I'm not 100%. Maybe that's why it's not working. Bog Witch is a 3-mana 2-1 zombie wizard. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature died this turn, transform Bog Witch. Unfortunately, it has no backside, so we cannot transform it. So I'm going to reroll it. But I will read this flavor text first. Once upon a time, witches ran amok in Innistrad. Then one of them brought the sun to her dungeon. Who can... Who can forget the look of utter terror on her face as the dark moon loomed above her? The moon god. Source. It's a shame this card's not canon, because that's really interesting flavor text. Oh well. Graveborn Banshee is a 3-mana 2-1 zombie wizard. When Graveborn Banshee enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 black zombie creature token. Okay. For 3 mana, sacrifice Graveborn Banshee, regenerate target creature. That ability is so expensive you'll probably never use it, but honestly, if I'm playing a game where I've got, like, you know, a, a, a super important combo piece or, like, a demon that's, like, a 10-10 flyer or something... Yeah, you know what? I'll sacrifice Greyborn Banshee to keep that alive. Seems cool. Also, I really enjoy making a body with a, with my ETB. I can flicker this thing. Ah, fun card. I like it. 
let's see what is in store for us back where we last were. Oh my. Insectile Automaton is a 3-mana 1-1 one, one elemental. It is flying and tap. Insectile Automata deals 1 damage to any target. I'm starting to think it might take me kind of a long time to get through the 3 mana and higher mana value cards. Because it's just a lot easier to make an underpowered 3 mana card than an underpowered 2 mana card, as it turns out. If this is 2 mana, I'd be like, that's fine. At 1 mana? At 3 mana? I don't know. Built with scraps of other devices, Insectile Automata could outrun the quickest elf. Maybe that is also partially why I didn't really enjoy the first day of forging. Maybe it's those lower mana values that are just more interesting. Despise Expert. That's a weird... Despise... Okay. Three mana, two, one, zombie wizard. Whenever Despise Expert or another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do... Each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Honestly, if you have one of those cards that's like, I enter the battlefield. I'm a zombie. When I die, I enter the battlefield in the graveyard. And then you just kill that, and those bloop. Like, yeah, this is a combo piece. Played fair, probably not that strong. As a combo piece, it'll win you the game. Great. And it's probably fine, also. Like, probably pretty fine. If you have, like, you know, decayed zombies... Right? You make a decayed zombie, it shows up, you sacrifice a decayed zombie, you do the thing. Yeah. No. Perfectly reasonable. Those wizards? No need for illusions. Their hands have only rotted away. Sif, morgue assistant. Spike Tail Invoker is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two human pirate. We're seeing some pirates. We saw an orc pirate earlier. This is a human pirate. When Spike Tail Invoker enters the battlefield, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Yeah, three mana two two with a bounce effect. That's pretty playable. A voyage through Spike Tail Invoker's halls ends in dismemberment. So, would be cool if it like killed or something. Uh. Voring Clex's skirmisher. That doesn't seem good. 3 mana, 1-1, one, one, Human Wizard with Flying. As Vorinclex's Skirmisher enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus 1, plus 0 oh until end of... They're not... No, just, they just have it. They just get it. They're... they're Yes, it's, it's an aura. Or, no, I, I know aura means a thing in magic. I always want to use it to just mean a passive effect that's always going on around them. But I know that's wrong. Anyway. My cackling echoes your very heartbeat. As a 3 mana, 1-1... One, one, a little bit of a scary effect. I feel like this is just gonna die, but honestly, the effect, you know, being a flyer, having plus one, plus O to a chosen creature type, I like it. I like it quite a bit. I think it's a decent design. A little worried that it's too squishy, but that's okay. Otherwise, otherwise quite cool. Also, it implies that Warren Clex exists. That's weird. Enchantress of Jasmine is a three mana, two, one human wizard. When Enchantress of Jasmine enters the battlefield, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Very cool. Weird to see that it's in black, because that's more of like, hey, you, you sling a spell and it goes to your graveyard, but you can also do, you can do like a pretty cool black-blue deck here, I think. Yeah, I like this card. Don't fall into her trap. Blood Braid Makir. I don't know that word. I might be spelling. I might be pronouncing it wrong. Three mana, two, two, blue human wizard. When Blood Braid Makir enters the battlefield, create two, one, one, red fairy rogue creature tokens. I don't know what the flavor implications are of these fairy rogues, but cool. Three mana, two, two, with an extra you know, 2-2 two, two worth of stats, but they're they're not flying, though. I keep thinking that they're going to fly because they're fairies. No, these are fairies that just walk around on the ground. Or maybe they hover, but they can't actually fly. You know, that kind of thing. Why be wary of outsiders? 
They have only more powerful brothers to look out for them. Sion Ek, commander of the Slum of Kergoth. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Improvised Guardian is a 3-mana 2-1 flying spirit. I love this art. That's so cool looking. It really looks like it should be an artifact creature, but it's a spirit, which maybe that means it's a spirit inhabiting a body, and I don't think they usually call those, like, artifact creature spirits, so we'll let it pass. Just like when you inhabit a, you know, suit of armor, you are not an artifact creature. When Improvised Guardian enters the battlefield, if red was spent to cast it, create a 2-2 white spirit creature token with flying. This card's cool. It's not the most pushed, like, 3-mana 2-1 flyer. Like, if that was it, it'd be fine. It wouldn't be your favorite flyer, but it would be it would be fine, especially in limited. But you play it in a blue-red deck, now you're making 4-3 worth of stats that flies for 3-mana. I like it. I like it a lot. As a battle cry of triumph, the troops raised... Raised it to proclaim the protection of the fallen goddess. There's a lot of god talk. I don't know how much god talk there is in Innistrad. I know there's that one god. That, that, is that I, 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 You know what I'm talking about. There's the symbol. But uh, a lot of god talk in this set. Tactical Sasquatch is a very funny name for a card. What? Tactical Sasquatch is a 3-mana 2-2 Goblin Rogue. Whenever Tactical Sasquatch blocks or becomes blocked, flip a coin. If you win the flip, put a 1-1 counter on Tactical Sasquatch. I really like the design of that card. That is a very cool design. Someone, you, you, you have this on turn, I guess it's, it's, it's a little bit expensive, but it could grow forever in theory, so... Eh, maybe it's not too powerful, but it's a 2-2, two -two, you throw it down on turn 3, then your opponent goes, well, I have a 2-2, two -two, or a 3-3, three -three, but do I want to attack? I'm going to trade with your goblin, eh, maybe I should attack, and then you go, ooh, do I want to block? If I block and I fail the flip, then I've just, I've just lost my guy for no benefit. On the other hand, if someone says, well, I got a 2-2 and I'm happy to have it trade with your 2-2, you're sitting there being like, yeah, I'll block this 2-2, but I flip a coin and maybe I'll survive, and then next time I'll be bigger. Ooh, I like this card. This card's a cool design. Don't let them know what they're... Don't let them know what we're capable of. We've been hiding here, blending in with the tribe. They've been expecting our raid. Bone Binder, Praetor of Narhelm. So, this is like a goblin in a fursuit, right? That's just like, I'm gonna hang out. It's a very, you know, it's a tactical decision to dress up like a Sasquatch. And yeah. I like that card. Feels very goblin somehow. Rotting Grave Killer is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two Fungus Beast. Ooh. It has Death Touch. Okay. As long as Rotting Grave Killer is on the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. That first line is way longer than it needs to be, as long as this is on the battlefield. Yeah, that's true. That's just how that works. You don't have to say all that. But otherwise, yeah, three mana, two, two, that has Death Touch and buffs your whole board. That card's great. Some Necromancers thrive on Chaos. Like toying with nature. Others feed on it. The Rotting Grave Killer. I like it. It's cool. Orangutan, orangutan. Ah, uh, I kind of hope this card's bad so I can re-roll it. Three mana, two, two, blue merfolk rogue. It has flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. I mean... I, I mean... It checks out! It, this is a perfectly reasonable card! This is a 3-mana 2-2 with flying. 
that you know whenever you cast a non-creature you can discard to draw that's great that's uh, okay orangutan orangutan you know what this means to me this means to me like it reminds me of a weird fish variety where you're like what's that fish and it's like oh it's like a pico pico you know it's like it's some it's just some fish it's it's the orangutan orangutan except in this case that fish is sentient and a merfolk that's what this says to me they look like a milk carton they look like a hairnet they're even flatter than a tin Vincant, I see why you said they look like a milk carton now. <laughs> I had not read ahead. Well, you know what? Every set needs a little bit of weirdness, I guess. Although I think the set will have a lot. Eater of Elves is a three mana one two fairy wizard? Flying when Eater of Elves dies, it deals three damage to target player or planeswalker. I wish that was more interesting and cool if that like pinged a creature when it died that'd be pretty cool in her native Kessig, every elf even the rankest peasant the rankest could fly at will every elf can fly at will at least in, in my native Kessig. i don't hate this I'm going to keep it. I, I really, there's this temptation to reroll this card because it's like, ah, oh, that could be so much cooler. But that's the thing. I don't just get to say like, hey, make me a different card called Eater of Elves that's a fairy wizard for three mana. I don't get to do that. And you know what? This card's actually pretty cool. If I ignore that, I wish there was a cooler Eater of Elves card. Because I'm not going to get a cooler Eater of Elves card. Let's move on. Honestly, I should probably be wrapping up shortly. I'm hoping we can get to the fours before then, but I don't know how far away they are, honestly. Firefly Moth is a 3-mana 2-1 Insect Flyer. There's a lot of flying in this set, and I kind of like that. Hopefully there's enough in all the colors to be, like, not just, oh, these colors always win in limited because they have a million flyers, but other than that. Uh, yeah, it's a 3-mana 2-1 with flying that can regenerate itself for one green. That's awesome. I love it. The larva... Its larvae can move quickly, burning only the dead, the deadest trees. All right. I'm into that card. It's a cool card. Firefly Moth, yeah. Arrestor Giant is a three mana, four, four giant. It's vanilla. Okay, so we already made a giant that's just a vanilla card. I kind of would love to see this in Magic. You know how there's been like some kind of like vanilla creatures matters there's like two legendary creatures that are vanilla creatures matters cards and they're kind of interesting and apparently there's some like people are actually playing with them in commander and that's really cool i want to see that as a giant theme they have giants just be really big for their mana cost ah and then like maybe there's a few giants that care about vanilla giants i'd be super into that that would be really fun instead we have a rester giant a three mana four four an explosion of steel will bury your foes, then the bomb goes off. Scargan Bloodchief. I don't know if this card is too weak, quote-unquote, to really be used. I think in limited you will play a 3-mana 4-4 four, four vanilla. I think you will. Do I like a 3-mana 5-4 vanilla better? Yes. Are those two cards basically identical? Yes. But, I mean, if one's, like, common and one's uncommon or one's rare, okay, I mean, that's fine. I, I mentioned earlier, like, that happens. You see cards in the same set that are just strictly better than others, and, well, that one's common. That was intentional. <laughs> Vinkin said, one's art is way better. I can't argue with that. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a mess, but it'll have to do. I'm not re-rolling that one. Stand Your Ground is a three mana red and white instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. You can also foretell it for five mana. And it has no other effect. So this card just literally does nothing. 
but you could foretell it to like scare your opponent into thinking you have something better i guess there's always another answer let's try one maestra of the flame Ooh, is a three mana red and white two one human shaman Maestro of the Flame can't attack unless defending player controls an enchantment. For four mana, create a 1-1 one, one red and white spirit creature token with flying. So I kind of hate this card. Not a huge fan, but I have been completely hosed in games where my opponent had a mana sink and they used it every turn. And honestly, those 1-1s one, just kill you eventually. I don't think this card's very good, but I don't think that it is unplayable. I think someone will draft this and have a good time with it. I'm going to let it through. I think that the ability could be cheaper. I think its body could be better. Maybe if both those things happened, it would be too strong, though, so maybe it's in a great spot. I don't know. Her warm words charm even the fiercest spirits. Hover Mothcraft Handler. At first I thought that was just silly, and then I saw that it's a Goblin Artificer. And you know what? Yeah, this Goblin Artificer is going to make a Hover Mothcraft Handler. Uh, three mana, two one, Goblin Artificer. Not the, like, it's not a vehicle, even though it sounds like it kind of is, but I'm kind of into it not being a vehicle. This is This is the Goblin Artificer. But also, it's the it's both. They're always in the vehicle. It's like Heimerdinger. It has flying. You're thinking Corky? I am thinking Corky. It has flying, and for one and a white, you could untap target artifact. That's quite powerful. Repeatable untap? You know? Yeah. Only hits artifacts, so it's not too broken, but it also, you know, is still pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I like this card. I like this card a lot. It's Howling Only Brings the Dead, the Hungry, and those in terrible pain. You know, just that. Don't even worry about it. Crimson Gargoyle is a 3-mana 2-1 black gargoyle. Gargoyle? Is gargoyle a creature type in magic? I legitimately don't know. I know gargoyles are in magic i don't know if they're a creature type it has flying for generic and black sacrifice crimson gargoyle it deals one damage to target player or planeswalker this card is boring it's a three mana two one with flying you could sack it to ping one eh. what is a gargoyle without its own cemetery Nico Yarmio, Spellweaver Fishmonger. I'm into a Spellweaver Fishmonger. I want to know more about this character. They seem cool. Honestly, though, yeah. Three mana, two one with flying. Put that in the common spot. Hey, I'll draft that. I would like some flyers in my limited game. Basically, always. Especially if they can do some damage. If it was like a one two, I'd be way less interested in this card. Flower Thief Wasp is a 3-mana 1-2 insect. I'm really into these insect cards. There's been a lot of insect cards, and I think most of them have been, like, people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't think I don't think these are, like, you know, swarm of bugs kind of thing. I think these are more, like, fairies, but they're not fairies. They're insect people. Which is interesting, because I feel like a lot of fairies are kind of insect people, the way they're depicted in magic. But, you know. Oh, well. Cats get to just be people. Why can't insects just be people? Also, they're probably bigger than they're probably bigger than fairies. So, yeah. Three mana, green, blue, one two insect with flying. Tap target creature can't block this turn. It's a good effect. I'm sure if this was two mana, I'd be like, that's fine. But I think it's probably better at three. 
It prefers a nest of spiders and the nightmares they dream to its own destruction. That's so interesting. Like, I know it means nothing, but it also is like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. There we go. Grave Tide Gnats is a 3-mana 2-1 Goblin Artificer. Hmm? It has flying as well, so 3-mana 2-1 flying. We're seeing that a few times. Generic and... Gr not green. Generic and red. Grave Tide Gnats gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn, but activate only once. So it is expensive fire breathing that you can only do one time. But hey, it's 3-mana 2-1 flyer. It's probably okay. It's not very good, but it's also not really red's jam unless you start getting into, like, big dragons, which, like, having that sort of mid-tier is... I feel like it's not that common. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not... I don't... I don't know things. Yeah. A nod of mid-game rotations is how the gnats ended up here. Yeah, but you're a goblin artificer. What does that mean? Maybe I should reroll that one. I'm, I'm confused. Smokestack Whelp is a 3-mana 0-1 elemental. Okay. It has Flash, and it enters with 3-1-1 counters on it. Okay. So it's a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with Flash. Yeah. All right. And there are counters, which is sometimes relevant. I probably won't be here, but sometimes. Smokestacks smolder to hold enemies at bay. Then growl and snarl. So wait, smokestack, like, people call them... That's that's interesting. So it's not so much as like, oh yeah, those are the whelps that hang around the smokestacks. It's like a variety, a variety of elemental called the smokestack whelp. Or maybe it's called a smokestack and these are the whelps. That, that also works. Cool, I like that. Mind... Mind swipe, actually. Or mind's wipe. It's either mind swipe or mind's wipe is a 3-mana white enchantment. That's not true. It's an instant. I'm sorry I said that. Bleh. Target creature gets minus 2, minus 0 until end of turn. You can also cycle it for 1 white mana. Not not 1 and white, but yeah. 3-mana... It's bad. But you can cycle it? I don't know. How much worse can a card be with the benefit of it having cycling? Mind Swipe doesn't erase it. It's simply unpleasant to look at. I hate this card. If this card was just target creature gets minus two, minus zero, oh, until end of turn, draw a card, would I like it? I think even then I wouldn't. I'm gonna reroll this one. This one feels feels like feels like the time. But also, I'm hearing myself pronouncing words in just the worst way possible. Pyrocosmic Pillar is a 3-mana instant destroy target, non-land permanent. Okay. That's good. Okay. Anyway, I, I, I can hear myself messing up words, so I think it might be time to end the stream. So I will leave you with this. Oh, my aching bones. There must be some mistake. I am here, but not here, Elvish Witch. Have a good night, everyone. I have been Darcy Bits. This has been the third portion of Forging, the Pumpkin Folk Witches of Innistrad. I hope you all have a happy Halloween. Have a good night. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But it will be November by then. <laughs> That's okay. Halloween is two months. Have a good night.